We're in for a wonderful opportunity today, Lord willing. And are we on? Can let's see, is can anybody tell if we're on Facebook? Let me check right now. Hold on. Don't want to need your name. No. Let's see if we're on the time. No, it should be on my name. Nope. As soon as we get started. All right, we are in business. All right, awesome. So, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to P-Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, uh, what is it, goodness gracious, Uh, January the 2nd, 2022. I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year, everyone. Happy new year. So if you've never joined us before, uh, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God and we utilize technology and we have a great time. So uh, hopefully everybody will have a a great time to interact with us today in our session. Um, We'll be talking about some uh, wonderful things today. And uh, I ask comment, ask questions. You can ask questions, comments and, you know, so forth. So let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name, Lord God. We thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, God. We yes, thank Lord. you for everybody that's here with us, oh God. And we just pray, Father, that you will just have your way um, today, God. As we start out this new year, we pray that it'll be a time of refreshing, God. We pray that it'll be a time of encouragement, God. And that we all will have an opportunity to understand and love you more, Lord God, and be more pleasing to your will and to your word. So, Father, we just thank you right now, and we just give you glory. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm just getting a couple of things set as I am uh, working with, as we're... uh, walking and uh, beginning. So I did have a question of the day. Uh, and let me go ahead and repeat that this year, uh, this morning or actually afternoon. So um, the question of the day is, uh, what habits do you want to continue in 2022? And what do you plan to change? All right. All right. So what habits do you plan to continue in 2022? And what do you plan to change? All right. So who wants to go ahead and go? Uh, Sure, I'll go first. Okay. Um, What habit I plan to keep? Um, Last year, what, in February, I think? Somebody hounded me to start going to Tiger um, Academy, and I started going. I actually loved it, so I plan to continue to do my little workout regimen. Um, if not, continue that, even go more this year. Actually, start going on Fridays, and also, what I want to change. I would like to change. Um, well, uh, pretty much communicate more with my husband. That's what I want to change this year. I can't hear nobody. Well, I'm sorry. You know what? I was muted. I said, who else would like to go next? Oh, okay. So you got, uh, who would like to go? 
You go. <laughs> now somebody else can I go. Am. All right. Or we can move on. I'll go in a little bit, but I'm taking care of something. Well, I would like to continue, you know, uh, one of the best things that's ever happened to me was me participating in this Bible study with my, uh, with my uh, Christian family, uh, you guys, of course. And um, things I would like to change, I learned a long time ago not to voice those things because when they don't change, it becomes a bigger disappointment than never acknowledging them to begin with. <laughs> okay. Amen. It's, All right. it's, it's sort of like um, what Jesus said in the Bible, you know, uh, don't make promises you can't keep, you know, type of thing. Okay. Amen. Let your yeses be amen. You got it. All right. Awesome. And anyone else? Got time for maybe one well, more. John Black put something in the chat. Um, I don't know if you wanted to read it or not. Oh. Yeah, I got so much going on. I'm getting ready to read it right now, though. Okay. Um, Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, my thing was I, for, I began by establishing better standards for what I accept in my life. Um, from this point on, I will not be put off in my dedication to serve by those who don't understand, but rather prove my sincerity by being who the Lord called me to be, even unto them. And I had to demonstrate that this morning, even after I typed that. Even as we speak right now, I just, I'm just getting a text. Uh, I know I told you, Darren, you know, um, Tiafa was getting ready to go to patient first or something like that. She found out patient first was closed. She's going to have to, um, she's going back to the ER. So I'm probably going to continue my Zoom session from my tablet on my way down there. Um, I, like I said, I had to let somebody know this morning because they were checking up on me. And, you know, I told them, you know, I'm getting ready to go uh, check out Kiafa because, you know, she's going through it again. And they said something that was kind of disrespectful along the lines of, yeah, we need to go ahead and get back together and things like that and and some more stuff. And I, 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 I had to... I had to put them in their place, you know, and, you know, this is somebody that I do a lot of stuff for, so they don't really have space to talk about what I'm doing for someone else, you know, so Amen. I don't know, that's just, it's, it's my initiation that I'm dedicated to. Okay. Awesome. Well, with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, get started, shall we? Yes, sir. So, um, right. this, go ahead. What were you about to say? I said, no. No, I said, all right, I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. So, first of all, it's been a little while since we've been together. Um, we had a little time during the break, you know, gave everybody some time to spend with their family and things of that nature. Um, you know, I had to take care of a couple of things and, uh, you know, just really gave us a chance to catch up. So one thing I do want us to really look at, I know it's been a while, I'm not sure if you went back and checked uh, the last thing we talked about, but last time we were together, we talked about being selfless. So um, first thing I want to do is we're going to begin or continue in our study of uh, 1 John uh, chapter 2, okay? So let's go ahead and begin reading and and beginning in verse one uh let's see okay here we go my little children these things i write to you so that you may not sin and if anyone sins we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the whole world now, by this, we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. And, you know, let me make sure we do something. All right. That we keep his uh, commandments. All right. And he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. 
By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you've had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Now, the last time we talked, as I mentioned, we talked about being selfless, okay? And so in dealing with that, um, you know, we talked about being selfless towards others, right? And in our walk with Christ and, you know, how we should serve others. And it's, it's, it's what he's called us to do. But now I want us to continue on in our journey and our study. And we're now going to look at, again, today, beginning in verse seven, where he says, brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you've had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. So I first want to start out with a simple question. What do you think he's talking about here? He says, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you've had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. And just reading it, you know, it, it sounds like, you know, somewhat like a, of a riddle. Riddle me this. <laughs> Do I look silly? Are you muted? Yeah. All right. So, what do we think he's talking about here? Love. Um, loving one another as Jesus has loved us, as our Father loves us. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. So you think he's talking about love. Okay. Anyone else? I want to say what's up and welcome to Mati Santiago Howard. Happy New Year to you. Who's checking us out on Facebook Live? So what else is he what else do you think he's talking about? Anything else? Anyone else? All right. Now, one of the things um, I, I, I kind of agree, and I think that he may be talking about love and he doesn't say it explicitly here. Right. But I kind of believe that he is. Uh, just as a reminder, um, I want you to turn with me to John 13. OK, beginning in verse 34. So. All right, and I'll begin actually in verse 31 for a moment, just for context sake. So he says, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I'm with you. You'll seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you, what? Love. Love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And then here you have one of the verses, which you've, if you've hung around with me for any point in time, you've probably heard me quote this verse. By this... <laughs> All people will know that you are my disciples. If you have what? Love. Love for one another. All right. So this right here is a very good reminder. All right. Because we can tell, you know, that this he's saying here, you know, this was Jesus talking. He's like, look. You know, a new commandment I'm giving to you that you love one another in the same way I've loved you. That's what I want you to do. And this is the mark that people will know that you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. 
And then also, do you remember Matthew? I want you to turn um, in, to Matthew 22. All right. So turn to Matthew 22, beginning in verse 34. All right. So check this out. He says, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. All right. And saying, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So I got a question for you this morning, because as, as we're seeing this, we're seeing this this love is a very important theme. Would y'all agree? Yeah. Especially as been demonstrated and communicated by Jesus. This is the words of Jesus, right? So he says, you know, and remember at this time when Jesus was talking to them, you know, of course they had the Ten Commandments, right? You know, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, you know, Thy ox, the neighbors, but manservant or anything that is your neighbors and this and that, right? But then we fast forward a few hundred years, thousand years, and we get to where Jesus is talking in Matthew. And he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with all your mind. That's the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, and he says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, you got those 10 commandments there. You're trying to fulfill each and one, every one of those and make sure you get that right. You use your little 10 commandment rubric and hey, well, let me make sure I got this right here. But he says, what you really need to do is focus on this and you'll be good. So I have a question for you to start out. Okay. How are you doing? you know, in your, in your love checkup, just like we go to the doctor, we get our checkup, right? We, we take our car to the, um, we take our car to get our oil change. And, you know, we take it into the service station or wherever we go for our routinely uh, periodic checkups, right? You even get your teeth checked up from period of time. But my question is, how are you doing on your love checkup? OK, so we're, I'm going to take a page from Steve Harvey. You know, I was checking out a little bit. Uh, thanks <laughs> to my wife, a little bit of uh, some uh, family feud, you know, or if you want to go back further before Steve Harvey, there was Richard Dawson. And, and he would yeah. say, you know, hey, you know, if so many thousands of hundreds of people were surveyed and asked this question. And my question is this. If we surveyed your friends, your co-workers, your family, your neighbors, your classmates, etc. And we say, ask them, would you say by knowing John Marquita, whoever you are, that you can tell that they're Jesus' disciple by the way that they love you and the way they actively show you love? Wow. Wow. How would people how would people respond? What do you think people would say? But I think everybody would say yes to me except my sister. Okay. <laughs> but no. Um, but no, I think um uh I think that I will get my survey actually will be a good survey. Okay. Good. Anyone mm -hmm. else? And that goes for our Facebook audience as well. You're welcome to comment, participate. I think on my survey that people would say that I'm a bit rough around the edges, but overall that I'm a, that I have a good heart and that I am loving inside ultimately, you know, but I still am a little rough around the edges. <laughs> okay. 
Amen. Thank you for your honesty. And let's see. Um, and we see we have some. All right. Um, somebody. Oh, Precious said, I think most people would say yes. Okay. All right. Now, this is very important that we look at this. All right. Somebody, uh, Chris said, they say Chris needs some work. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. Now, whatever our response or whatever we think our projected response would be of others, um, if we've been doing a good job at loving others, you know, keep it up. But here's the key, as evaluated by the Holy Spirit, if we get in our prayer closet and we ask this question and God says, you know what, you're doing, you're doing a good job, then keep it up. You know, so you put press down on the gas and continue and purpose intentionally to love others more. But some of us, if we're being real and perfectly honest, let's think about it. There's probably some people that we may have had a little bit of beef with. Now, we Christians and saved, so we, we're not going to say we had some beef with. You know, it's not like when we was in elementary school in the playground and, you know what I'm saying, I was feeling kind of salty, say. So, you know, I had to give them a two-piece, right? Well, maybe yeah. high school. High school. <laughs> and a biscuit. You said what? Uh, and a biscuit. And a biscuit. There you go, Chris. <laughs> yes, sir. So, but, you know, and, and now that we're saved and, and walking with Christ, we don't say those things like that. We don't say, you know, Man, I just wanted to punch her in her face. Man, I, I, you know, you don't hear people say stuff like that. But <laughs> what you hear people say is, you know, she said something and I just felt some kind of way. You know, I had to just go pray. Right. But in reality, translation, I wanted to crack her in her face. <laughs> but that's right. <laughs> And, but one of the things we have to do is we have to learn to really be real. And, and we need to allow ourselves to be evaluated, not just by ourselves, but we need to be evaluated by the Holy Spirit. We need to get in the prayer closet and ask him that hard question. Because there may be some people that we may be feeling some kind of way about. All right. And if that is the case, then God gives us some instructions. If, if, if we think that, you know, we feel that we're lacking or coming up short, then we can turn to our brother James in chapter one and verse mm. five. Okay. Love, James. Mm. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it'll be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what do we see here? Watch this, y'all. This might mess with you. Um. So as we're looking at this, some of us in 2022 have made these wonderful resolutions or revolutions, whatever you want to call them. And, but one of the things, you know, some people are like, you know what, I'm a, I'm a level up in 2022. You know, I'm going to meet, reach meet the next level, more money, more money. Right. And so, but here's the thing. What about doing something different? Instead of just asking God for more money or more things or more blessings or more favor, what about asking him to show us where we need to tighten up and what he's already asked us to do? No. Wow. That's kind of deep there, ain't it? That, that, that one kind of hit. <laughs> Because this is what he's asking us to do. He's already been asking us the whole time. Let's dive into this a little bit more. 
Watch verse 7. Listen to this. Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you've had from the beginning. Hmm. Wow. He says the old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. So John here is saying, now nah, it's not a new commandment, but really it's the same old commandment that we've had from the beginning. He always told us to love each other. Even back, if you look back in the Old Testament, you know, when he was saying, you know, hey, look, where is your brother? Uh. He was encouraging and challenging him to love. Amen? Uh. And so, look and, at verse... Can I, well, can I put this in there, too? And not just to love one another, but to love one another as we love our own self. Amen. Amen. That's real. That's very important. Because, you know, we feel some kind of way about ourselves if anybody say anything to us. But we're quick to say something about somebody else. You know, and and, uh. and and as we're looking at this thing, I want us to kind of really dig deep into this. Because I want you to look at verse 8 for a moment. And let me give anybody a moment before I continue. Um, let me give anybody a moment if anybody wants to comment or respond so far on uh, where we are so far. Hey, Pastor. Yes, sir. Um, hey, I second that what Brother John just said. And I, I, it just, I just thought about that. Um, it just came to me rather profoundly. You loving, loving your neighbor as yourself. You know, basically, if you're putting your that same type of love into other people as you do yourself, just think how incredible you know that is or would actually be. Amen. Yeah. That's real. That's real. So watch this. Let's take a look at verse eight for a moment. Y'all ready to dive in? Y'all still with me? I uh -huh. noticed, th 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 you know, this ain't, this ain't a little happy. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get this in the new year message. It's not one of those. <laughs> and you, too, can have a car in 2022. I got a car. God's got a car for you in 2022. God's got a wife for you in 2022. This, that's not what this message is. Amen. So look at this. Look at verse eight. He says again, and this is back in first John chapter two. Again, a new commandment I write to you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Here's a question. What's this mean to you? What do you consider the darkness, first off? Sin, evil, negativity. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Hey, especially. Oh, sorry. I said hate, especially having those negative feelings where you want to hurt somebody else, you know, to make yourself feel good or to put somebody else down in order for you to feel good. Those are dark feelings. Those are negative feelings. And that's part of the darkness that is, that is shining in the world today. The selfishness. Amen. Overall. And anyone else? I thought some, was somebody else going to share as well? I think it's a, a matter of conversion. Like we're we're pretty much born in sin and shaping in inequity, and that pretty much e equals to the darkness that he's referring to. That when we come out of that, the darkness is dead. You know, we have crucified our flesh, and we are in Christ now. And it's 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 a, it's a lifestyle that's full of love. Okay, 
And Precious said, anything that's not like God. Okay. Amen. So, when I look at this and Amen. think of this, um, you know, that word that he used for uh, darkness is the Greek word skosha, which means, okay, the darkness due to one of light. And, you know, it comes from another word, which is um, basically means obscurity or dim. And so when I'm looking at this, to me, it reminds me of that, those areas that one thing we like to do is we consider to be gray areas where we use our own personal interpretation. The old way of doing things, better known as the world's way. And one of the things we have to be careful of is falling under the guise of popular opinion or what's considered right by everybody else. We see everybody acting wow. a certain way on the Disney show, so that makes it acceptable. And so we have to be careful about that. So now I want to ask you the next question. What's the true light? then the opposite of everything we just named okay the opposite of everything we just named okay good so the true light then would be not the watch this not the world's way because see the problem is many of us have followed the world's way and wondering why we're taking the L. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that on the way home. <laughs> but then when you follow the word's way, you see the difference between the word and the world is the L that you take when you follow the wrong advice and the wrong leader. So the true light is the word's way. It's the clearly delineated and outlined areas in our lives that God describes and tells us to do according to his word. It's those areas where we have to submit, which means come under the authority of, which means do not what I want to do, but you, what you say to do. So if we're wondering, then here's a question, what's the true light that's already shining? Let's continue the, and read the next verse for a little more insight. Watch this, y'all. Verse nine says, he who <clears throat> says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. Wow. I'm going to say that again. Uh -huh. He's given us some serious insight. He says, he who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. So I got a question for you. Many of y'all, you know, many of you probably received some clothes this Christmas. And, you know, and some gifts and things of that nature. And by the same token, many of you may have decided to get rid of some things, okay, that, you know, maybe to the thrift store, stuff you didn't wear anymore. But how many of you have tried and been in a situation where you or someone you know had tried on an old outfit that you used to wear back in the day? And... It used to fit perfectly. You talk about, man, when I used to rock this, man, oh, all the ladies would love what I have on. You know, whatever the case is. When I went up in the club with this, but now it fits just a little bit different. You look like <laughs> Mr. Brown in Tyler Perry. Like somebody wow. painted it on you. <laughs> when you try to fit it and, and watch this. And what do we, what do we do? You know, we try it on 
And we like, oh man, this thing fits just like you did in high school. Right? And, and but you still, and, and you in the mirror, you modeling and showing it off. But the mirror says, mirror, mirror on the wall. You a liar of them all. <laughs> the mirror disagrees with you and anybody else who got two eyes with clear vision <laughs> also disagree with you. Right. So here's the question. Or as like Chris said, like the nutty professor looking like Sherman. So who's right? Who will you believe? Yourself? Who says, man, this thing fit just like it did in 1991. Woo. Or your kids who like, daddy, what in the world do you got on? <laughs> Shout out to my daughter, Shauna. The kids in the mirror. So watch this. That's what I think of when I read this verse. We might say that, watch this, y'all, the light fits us, and we're walking in the light. We say that, oh, yeah, we good over here. And, and you might have all your little religious church boxes checked. Your attendance, oh, I go on Sunday, I check in on Zoom and this and that. Your choir or whatever ministry you serve in. Your giving, oh, I give faithfully and regularly. Your attire, oh. Man, you should have seen what I had on on Sunday. Or even your talk, you got the talk down. My brother, I feel blessed today in the Lord. I feel too blessed to be stressed. And you might even have the music down. You rocking that, that, that Kurt Franklin. But my question is, what good is all of that if you're still holding on to that grudge against your brother or sister since 1988? According to what we just read, and I'm not saying it, this is just what, what it said, you're still in the darkness. In fact, I want you to see this. He said, you're still in the darkness. Watch this, meaning that you never really made it into the light. Wow. You just being fooled with the little cheap Dollar Tree nightlight while everybody else <laughs> is in the giant concert floodlight. You got your little Dollar 25 nightlight and thinking you're doing something. Are, are y'all understanding this thing? Amen. And and this thing, if I can, and we're about to break some stuff down a little bit more. All right. And so look at what he says. He says, he who says that he's in the light and what his brother? What's that word? Hate. Hate. Hates. Now I heard somebody say that hate is a strong word. Right. But I want you, I want, to, want you to see this. The word hate that he uses here is the Greek word meseo, which means to hate, to pursue with hatred, to detest. That is kind of strong. Now, I want you to join me, if you can. And as I turn to the book of another reference passage. Matthew chapter six, and this should be, this probably is very familiar to many of you. And some of you might even be able to read right along with me. Therefore, do not be like them. And the beginning in uh, verse eight, therefore do not be like them for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask them. In this manner, Therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Some of y'all stop right there. 
I need my daily blessing. Lord, I, I want my daily bread. Forget my daily bread. I want my lobster, God. But, and what? Forgive us our debts. And we focus on that. But look at the next thing. He says, as we forgive our debtors. So, if I were to, and many of you know, I was a, a physics teacher for many years, and you know, I'm somewhat skilled in the areas of science and mathematics. If I were to look at that, I would even say that there's a proportional relationship. It's directly proportional. He says, when he says, and forgive us our debts, what? As we forgive our debtors. There's a direct relationship. And, and, and to furthermore, just to show that I'm not just blowing smoke, he says, and do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And many of you just stop right there. Right? You, you say the Lord's Prayer, you know, the model prayer, and, and you're good. Some of you, that might be the only prayer, you know, but it's okay. But what, look at verse 14. He says, for if you what? Forgive men their trespasses. Your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive your men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. See, to me, that's what I call a direct relationship in math or science as x goes up y goes up as x goes down y goes down are, are y'all seeing this thing here so if you don't forgive men of their trespasses then your father our father as we like to say, who art in heaven, won't forgive us. Wow. Do, do, do y'all agree now? Do y'all see that direct, relation, direct relationship? Always have. Amen. Now watch this. I, I need us to see something. It starts out as a simple seed of unforgiveness and then grows up into hate, a full-blown tree. It's, in other words, here's an example. Starts out like, you know, maybe there was a little disagreement, maybe a miscommunication. Somebody didn't say something they were supposed to, do something they said that they would do. And they didn't apologize. And what are you doing? You decide, you know what? It goes both ways. I'm not calling them. They got the, it goes both ways. They got a phone just like I got a phone. They can text me just like I could text them. And so then you play that waiting game. Waiting on them to make the first move. Because as you say in your heart, you know what? That's what they supposed to do. Forget about being the bigger person. Then after it goes from that waiting, it goes to that not speaking. Mm -hmm. Then it grows to be a, a little cold feeling towards them. And then when you're talking to others about the situation or about them, you're sharing the same thing. And now you're beginning to reinforce that and justify mm -hmm. that. You even got your own thesis and dissertation on to why you're justified and feeling the way you do. And it grows up into full grown hatred. Can anybody identify with that process? With that time? Oh, yeah. Can I say personally and, and to be personally transparent, I've seen this unforgiveness to hatred timeline anatomy wreck families even my own oh, yeah. personal family 
And so I want us to really understand and see the importance of this concept going into this new year. Look at verse 10 back in, um, and well, actually, let me pause for a second. Any questions, comments, responses? I have a comment. Yes, sir. Unforgiveness leads to hatred, which is like a cancer. It grows and it grows until it ultimately consumes you and kills you from within. It, it's, it's worse than anything that we could ever do to ourselves. I mean, it, it, I know it's Satan's, Satan's concept. You know, that's the way he gets it. Well, he didn't, he didn't apologize to you, so why should you call him? You know, type of attitude. You know, and that's just wrong. We know that. But we're too pig-headed and bull-headed sometimes to realize it. You know, we let our, um, what, do, what do you call that, masculinity or, or whatever get in our way. You know, for women, it's something different. You know, it's like we, we can't allow ourselves to be so puffed up that we overlook what we're doing. Amen. We can't justify ourselves. And you know what? That's, that's that's very real. And one of the things that I look at and I've always said is that that unforgiveness and I use that same analogy, but also expound even another step, because watch this. It leads to what the Bible calls a hardened heart. Yeah. And just like that cancer, you know, it grows and it spreads and might be a tumorous growth and it consumes everything around it. You know, that's how that unforgiveness starts. It starts as a small thing and then begins to continue to move to everything else around it. And then you have no warmth towards that person in your heart. And then you begin to be justified at watch this. Then it becomes to be a pattern. You cut off this other person and feel justified. So now another person that enters your life they do the similar thing that calls whatever feeling of injustice upon you. And now you feel justified in doing the same thing to them. Then it becomes yeah. easier and easier. And now you're like a serial killer because you got a trail of bodies behind you. Yep. John. Black. Yes, sir. I can give my testimony regarding this, uh, especially regarding my wife, because doing the things that we're going through right now, when it first began and I was making my transition out of the household, there was some opposition regarding her and we bumped heads and we bumped them kind of hard. And I don't mean we just lost antlers. You know, we was, you know, we was totally at odds. And being the bigger person, I, I know as much as there was things that, you know, that bothered me, I always had, I kept a soft spot in my heart because certain things override the differences that we have. You know, certain things you have to come together for. You can't just completely under, what do you call it? <laughs> Unconditionally cut somebody off. Mm, come on. Amen. That's real. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Anybody else? Now, watch this. And we're getting to a point of closing, y'all. We're almost there. So um, looking in 1 John, back to uh, 1 John chapter 2, looking at verse 10, watch this. Then we get to verse 10. It's, he says, he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause for stumbling in him. Now, this Greek word for stumbling. Watch this, y'all. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all going to learn something. Is the Greek word scandalon. Does that sound like anything? If you saw it written out, you might 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 think it is. What's that sound like to y'all? Exactly. So that word 
is the word, that's where we get our word scandal from. It means the movable stick or trigger of a trap, like a trap stick. You know, you ever remember, like, you know, if you have a, a, a trap and it's a stick that somebody tries to move or get to, or that, watch this, that carrot that you're going for, and then what happens is that gets moved, you get caught in the trap. And so what I want us to see, if we truly love our brother, we don't have to worry about being tripped up in our walk with God. We don't have to worry about falling into the trap or falling into what I like to call that, you know, anybody have, have some friends or, or, you know, some people when they call D or you see their name pop up on the timeline that you know it with them. <laughs> Anybody got that? It's all it's almost like you brace yourself, like you bracing yourself for an accident. You know, like you in a car and you know you're about to hit, you just like, okay, I, I can't stop myself. I, I'm gonna hit and run into the back of them. I'm just gonna brace myself. <laughs> and you brace yourself because you know this person is coming with drama. Or some of you might be that person. But anyway. Um, <laughs> but when we watch this, if we truly walk in the light and don't hold on to that unforgiveness, then we don't give any room to the enemy like that. He can't get in. He can't get us. Amen. The Bible says, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. And this is something that we've allowed and justified to hold and separate us for so long. And then look in verse 11. He says, but he who hates his brother is truly in darkness and walks in darkness. So if you, if you real talk, if you hate your brother, you got this unforgiveness and watch this. And, and I'm, I'm going to take it back. To not just hate, because some of us look at, oh, well, I don't really hate anyone. I just look at somebody and just. But SMH can escalate to hate. Shaking your head can escalate to hate. So wherever you are on this timeline. We have to be very careful. So listen, he says, but he who. Don't just say because, oh, because I don't hate anyone. I really don't feel like I hate anybody that you're excused. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. The saddest thing is you sitting there walking around and think you good, but really you don't know where you are. You don't know where you're going. And the title of this message today is called Something Old, Something New. Why do I say that? We have that old commandment, which is what? Love. 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 And we have that new commandment, which is what? Love. Continue to love. But yeah. we're broken it down even more so in the area of watching out for that unforgiveness. So in closing, in this year, 2022 and beyond, I want to challenge you to make an intentional effort and commitment to walk in forgiveness. How many, I want y'all to be like Teflon. See, I'm going to tell you, I grew up, when I was growing up and washing dishes, we ain't had nothing called Teflon. We ain't had no <laughs> Teflon. All we had was tough cast iron. And if somebody was cooking something, 
and some tough cast iron skillets, you know what you had to do? You had to get that Brillo pad and get it out. But see, now they got something called Teflon. And so when you're cooking with Teflon, you put a little butter in that pan, whatever you got in there, it slides right out. And so what we need to do is we need to aim to be that Teflon. We can't let anything that unforgiveness stick to us. When somebody say something we ain't feeling, we need to act like we coated in butter. Let it slide right off. Amen? Oh. Thoughts, Amen. comments, questions, responses? Amen to that. I think that maybe, you know, because a lot of people like to justify their feelings, you know, by saying, oh, well, you know, like you said, oh, well, I don't, I don't hate anybody, but do you dislike them? Do you dislike talking to them? Do you dislike hearing them? You know, that translates into the same thing. You know, I don't care how you say it. I don't care what word you say it. It's the feeling inside that you have. You know, we're, we're told not to pay attention to our feelings. But some feelings are important for us to understand. Negative feelings that build up inside towards our brothers and sisters are things that lead us down to the trap door that you're talking about. So I think it's very important that we don't use terminology to try to reflect a more beautiful picture of ourselves but rather use the raw truth, you know, we don't like the raw truth because it shows something bad about ourselves. But if we use the raw truth, that's how much closer you'll be to God. Amen. You know, that's how much, that's how much closer you'd be to yourself. I mean, come on. That's real. That's definitely real. And, but I also want to piggyback on that and provide a little thing too. I guess um, because one of the things we have to realize is sometimes we do get some bad feelings about people, but it may be justified. And it, it may be like, you know, give you a perfect example. You know, I've been married for many years and many times I can recall my wife saying, you know what? I don't get a good feeling about this person. And, and so yeah. with that, we have to realize we do have a level of guidance, but in those feelings, we can't allow that motivation to be hate. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's okay. It, it's okay to say, you know what? Um, those people are bad news. I'm going to stay away from them. It's okay mm -hmm. to, to say that and do that safely. But right. you got to be careful of our perspective. If we doing that because we like, oh, I'm better than them, then that's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong perspective. But if we're doing that because we're saying, well, how can two walk together except they be agreed? You know, they're, they're walking a different path. I'm walking over here. So that means I can't walk and ro roll with them like this. We, we can't be like this. Right. That, that can't be my stick man like that. We can't do everything we used to do because I'm not who I used to be. I've changed. Amen? Uh, and speaking of, what's up to my, my homie, uh, Katash Merck? David Katash Merck, what's up, fam? Welcome. All right, so any other... Uh, Questions, comments, Man. responses. Yeah, I want to um, give some grace, um, but I, I got to give a disclaimer first. And my disclaimer pretty much is to watch that anger because anger 
it, it it's basically along the lines of what we're talking about. It has that tendency to fester and grow into something greater. Mm-hmm. With that being said, be angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amen. Yeah. That's real. Amen. And kind of going off that, um, I think it's a scary prayer to pray, as you said earlier, help us to go in this new year with more forgiveness than ever, because I know that God's going to test you if you say stuff like that. Mm. But I also (laughs) am thinking in my own way, how I see myself react to some things is I get emotional after the thing happens and then I just, you know, let it out, not towards the person or anything. And then I'm like, okay, I'm done. I don't know if anyone else is an emotional person like me, but I got to go to my room, cry a few tears and then like, be like, okay, I'm a Christian. So I got to get over this. So it's done now. I've already done my emotional outburst in private. (laughs) Is that, does that sound like a, does that sound like a Christianly thing to do or is? Absolutely. So <sighs> say that one more time. Um, Just allowing yourself to go through the emotions of hurt or anger in private and then Absolutely. just saying okay i'm done i'm a christian so i'm just gonna jesus forgave me i'm gonna forgive them move on absolutely because one of the things that i see people do the opposite of that is complete you put on that face that front like yeah. like oh i'm good Not, no, I'm, I'm we good we good and every time you see that person you got that issue in your heart. Mm-hmm. The Bible talks about, you know, you have, if you got an ought with your brother, you got an issue, you need to go and work that out and talk with him. Amen. And, but the problem is you look at people and you, you see that same person and you're like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, those feelings are still there. Exactly. And then what does that happen? It's like that infection that builds under the surface and you don't know what's happening. You don't see it. But then the next thing you know, it turns into a full blown abscess. And everything around it is infected. Amen. Excellent question, Haley. Excellent. I also I also want to piggyback on what you guys are talking about. Um, it is important that you know we express our harder emotions like that in private, like you're talking about. <clears throat> you know, just to take the tip off from that. But that issue is still going to survive. Therefore, you have to deal with that issue with that person, maybe on a more you know, less um, emotional level where you guys are able to come to a conclusion, a peaceful conclusion in which can be worked out with love. And one of the things I would say is you definitely want to take a step back and and take a yeah. breather. And, you know, yeah. in order to be able to communicate your thoughts and your emotions more you know, clearly after you've had a time, but one of the things you got to be careful is the Bible gives us a, tw- a, you know, a timeline. He says, don't let the sun go down on your rack. So right. you, you need to make sure that you handle that in a timely fashion. You know, you don't want to, mm-hmm. cause what happens is you say, okay, well, I'll get to that tomorrow. One day turns to two, two turns to a week. Next thing you know, you haven't spoken to that person in three years. Right. So we, we got to make sure that we're careful of those things. One thing I'm learning is you don't want to go with expectation all the time. Um, that when you say, hey, yeah. you really hurt me there. So they're not always going to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Um, uh-huh. Like recently I went to someone. I was like, hey, you really hurt me with this. And they're like, what? I don't I never did that. They just denied that they did it. And I was like, OK, I told them. They didn't apologize. That's okay. That's on them, not me. Moving on, mm-hmm. you know? So I just realized that if I would have 
went to that person thinking they're going to apologize and it's going to be good, more anger could have came out of that. Amen. And I'm going to tell you one of the things, and that's a great example, Haley, because one of the things that you have a choice to do, even as you brought that to them, you did your job as a believer. Now, it's up to them. You don't have responsibility Uh for their response. You can't, you don't have ownership of that. That's on them. But as long as you've done your part, and now the thing is, after you've done your part, you can't, you you don't allow that. You want to make sure you don't allow the enemy to creep in and be like, oh, well, see, that's exactly why. Because I went to them and I, I even apologize and they act like they ain't even see anything. And so such and such. And now you begin to build up this wall of unforgiveness towards them. And so that's mm-hmm. what you don't want to do. You say, you know what? Right. And, and, and yeah. now you begin to pray for them. You begin, like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. You begin to pray for him. Lord, Lord, just touch. She, she may not have seen. He may not have seen what he did. Well, understood. Help them to understand and see. But you have to make a conscious decision to continue. Because watch this. That forgiveness, that unforgiveness or forgiveness isn't just a single individualized action. It's a continual action. And every time when you see that person, you have to make an intentional decision to say, you know what, I'm going to continue to walk in this love until the part where it just becomes a part of you. Amen. Amen. So anyone else? Questions, comments, responses as we get ready to close out. Roxanne, Marquita, anybody? And that also goes our Facebook audience too. Yeah, Pastor, I got one more thing to say, and then I'll then I'll start up <laughs> for the night uh, for the day. Um, is that you know, like you said, we can't own things that don't belong to us. In other words. We can't, we can't say, um, you know, it was my fault that they are acting this way, you know, not if we're doing what is expected of us as a Christian point of view, you know, what the Lord has asked us to do, you know, we do it in the name of the Lord, we leave it and walk away. And it's up to them, however, they're going to handle it or react or whatever. And like you said, all we can do is sit back and pray for them. Amen. That's what's up. All righty, everybody. Well, hopefully everybody was encouraged with today's message and challenged by today's message. You know because this this isn't something that's easy and light. I'm not going to front. This is real talk. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Well, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get ready to pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, we just thank you and bless your name. I thank you for the lesson today, the truth of your word, your scripture just revealed in our life and how your the word just jumped right off the page into our lives, into our cards, into our conversations. And Father, I pray that we will make a point to intentionally walk in forgiveness to make a conscious decision to love because some of us don't even know or realize that 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 people are watching us and that may be the very thing that brings them and draws them to the throne of christ how somebody does us and how we respond and somebody may be watching for our response and say you know what i saw how they did you But I saw, even more importantly, how you responded. You didn't give in to them. 
And I want to be like you. I want you got something that I I want, and that just confirms it. That seals the deal. Father, help us to truly emulate and replicate in our lives, as you said in your word. So shall men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Yep. Help us to walk in that love, in the face of unforgiveness Lord God I just pray that you'll help us to be who you've called us to be and allow us not to be tripped up in so many different ways by others or by ourselves and our own flesh allowing it to be a stumbling block of these traps allow us not to think that we're walking in the, the light when we're truly just walking in darkness mm-hmm. Help us to address these issues in our hearts so you can really be, we can be who you have called us to be. We thank you, Father. And Father, if any of us struggles with the unforgiveness, God, and and, and not just the daily stuff, but there could be some deep-seated stuff, some things that some people have done you know, uh, long ago, as we learned, you know, even, you know, as faithful are the wounds of a friend, you know, we, we, those things hurt, you know, our our parents, our siblings, when they do things to us, because we're saying like, well, to anybody else I could expect, but not from you. Father, I pray that you will bring that healing, that deep-seated healing. Some of us even may be abused, have been abused. Father, I call that out even now. And I pray even for for forgiveness to reign even then. We can't allow the actions of those who done things in such a mean and evil way to hold us captive. We thank you, Father, and give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, guys, family, guys and, 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 and ladies in P-Town Fresh, we want to wish y'all a happy new year. I'm glad everybody was able to rock with us today. Yeah. And I pray that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to... A minute, you know, I'm letting the dog out. I'm not going to have time, so I'll call you later. Okay. All right, bye. Bye. Um... <laughs> We uh <laughs> Amen. So um we just pray that uh you know that you'll allow the Holy Spirit to continue the work of what he started today. You know, some of you may have started to go into the closet and, and start thinking about some things. And God, is this what you're talking about? Continue that conversation with them and allow him to help you to make that right choice and decision. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. And, Amen. I th- and I thank you all for rocking with us today on the, the, in, you know, in the virtual environment, as y'all know, uh, COVID has been, this new variant has been going crazy, especially after the Christmas break and everything. So in Portsmouth, I think it's like a 23% infection rate. So, you know, we, we decided it would be wise to, you know, and as we know that even some of our very own have uh, been exposed and tested positive and, you know, we praying for y'all. Um, but, uh, you know, we just want to be safe and use wisdom. Amen. So we may be going back to the Zoom thing for a little while. 
but we, you know, as y'all know, we we still doing this. It's, it's still kingdom. Sure. Amen. I love you, Chris, man. So, love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Lord willing, we'll be back. And uh, also, um, this Wednesday, we will be uh, back with morning prayer. So, uh, hopefully, y'all enjoyed the break over, uh, you know, over the break. We'll be getting back. And that means, you know, brothers, too, we're going to start grinding again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So love y'all. Please share. Um, I'll try to post this on YouTube when I get a chance. Okay. You know, share what you've learned. This is something we, we can act out ourselves, apply it ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And uh just walk this thing out. Let men know that you are God's disciples. Show them. Don't talk it. Walk it. That's right. Amen. 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 Love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Y'all stay safe out there. Love you, Mr. Moore. Goodbye. God bless y'all. How do you exit? I don't know how to exit.